have always felt that my, you know, I stand at the cusp of uh, the border of uh, writing and journalism. Uh, there's a very interesting phrase. Uh, one of my favorite uh, writers, the American author David Foster Wallace, used to uh, use for himself. He used to call himself a non-journalist. Um, I think that sums up, you know, my volume of work, work really well. I'm not. Uh, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a trained journalist, but uh, I, I have gone, I've always tried to go beyond the uh, my training as a journalist to make sense of what you call the chaos around us. Um, and, um, you know, I think a lot about these things. Um, why did I go to Buster, for example? For, for the first, I went to Buster for the first time in 98 when I met the Maoist for the first time. I was just 22 years old. I just passed out. And um, um, why did I go there and, um, and why did I stick to that place? Um, I think that comes from my own personal background as a, you know, as a Kashmiri pundit who's seen a lot of chaos early on in his life. Um, so when you see that chaos, then, you know, um, I, I think you develop a sort of empathy towards uh, people who may have gone through similar circumstances. I think that's what I felt in Bastar when I went there for the first time. Uh, but to come back to your larger question, yes, to, you know, even as a writer who may not have seen that kind of chaos, I have seen. Uh, but the overall responsibility or, you know, the overall work of a writer, as I see it personally, is to make, uh, you know, the world is always in a moment. Uh, uh, you know, there's a there's this beautiful Urdu couplet by Mirza Ghalib, and it says, "Ki hai raat din gardish mein saat asma ho rahega kuch na kuch ghabrayein kya." So the world is always in a motion. You know, uh, you are going out on a run on 19th March last year. You attend a, uh, a friend's birthday party, and uh, suddenly you see Mr. Modi on. Uh, Television say kal se janta curfew hai So you, so you, you know, uh, the next morning, you, you know, you wake up and you are used to hearing certain voices early in the morning, and suddenly you wake up, those all those voices are missing. And in the next few days, you see, you know, the stray dogs have just taken over the roads, you, you know, and after uh, a month or so, they think that you know now they are the owners uh, where humans used to dwell in the night eating ice cream, having ice cream with families, and suddenly there's no one on the road, right? So the dogs have taken over. So, you know, there's always this motion uh, around us. So I think the primary responsibility or the primary job of, of a writer is to make sense, sense of that. You know, I live in this apartment and I sometimes, you know, the observation, you know, you know I just come out and, you know, I see um, someone, uh, you know, I don't know the family, you know, you know how things are in, in, a, in a city, you know, we don't know your neighbors, but there's someone, you know, who lives in a tower op op opposite mine. Um, and there's a young lady who comes out every day at 7.30, instructing her uh, house help to clean the windows in a certain way. Uh, and I, and that's the time I usually sit in the balcony out with a cup of coffee and I haven't seen her in the last two days. So now I'm wondering what has happened to her. You know, maybe she's out. I mean, it's a normal thing, but uh, suddenly, you know, there's there's something missing. You know, there's some some motion of the universe has happened. So as a writer, you you know, it's a very it's a very small thing, but uh, um, you know, sometimes you try to make uh, uh, sense of these. You know, there's this uh, really extraordinary line by. Um, Albert Camus in one of his books, The Outsider, you know, my mother died yesterday or was it day before. I think a lot about this line, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, apart from the, uh, you know, the chaos in that man's life, uh, you know, you have to be a certain kind of man to forget your mother's own death, you know, uh, whether it was yesterday or day before. Um, so, you know, that's how you, that's how you, but that's, you know, that kind of man exists. Um, I know those kind of people, you know, and I also know kind of people uh, who can tell you the exact uh, date and time of their mother's death, which has happened 50 years ago. Uh, so as writers, you, you know, your primary, where do you get your 
so called so called material from and you know in journalism it's uh, technically in journalism uh, in, in in hardcore journalism um, it is frowned upon you know the concept of i in a story if you're writing for a newspaper um, you know you you have to write 300 words or 500 words or maybe 600 words um uh, so you better focus or concentrate on the subjects you're writing the characters you know to to give them a breather uh, because if you put your eye into it or, you, you know then the whole space is hot by you so that approach works for certain stories i have never shied up, away from uh, you, you know since i mostly do long form i i have never shied away from uh, putting myself in uh, in stories as a you know because when you know coming back to the idea of chaos which we are discussing when when you when you you're observing that chaos when you are trying to make sense of that chaos in this universe you also become a part of that chaos uh, so you know it's very uh, it's very dishonest uh, as far as i'm concerned to detach yourself you know to to surgically remove yourself from from the story uh, because in certain circumstances you become a part of that story. um and your lived experiences or what you observe and how you say it beyond the scope of hardline journalism has always been important it is definitely permitted it in what we increasingly call long form and it is very much definitely uh, you know permissible in in a book situation you know there are some brilliant books which have been written with you know with with the with the writer as a protagonist you know there used to be this uh, uh, great uh, new york times uh, uh, a reporter from the uh, called anthony shadid he he's no more he died in syria um he has done a wonderful book about his experiences and you know going back to his ancestral village and uh, constructing a house there where his forefathers lived it's um, it's a beautiful book called the house of stone um there's a wonderful book this uh, war correspondent called janin ji diwani has uh, uh down on the balkan war where you know she's very much part of that war and she's very much a part of that book um it's called the madness visible um uh, certainly you know there are other, lots of other examples michael hart for example the american great american writer uh, sending his dispatches from the vietnam war uh, the book is called dispatches as a writer i i struggle with these questions every day of my life um okay so you know i'm I, i'm going to answer this as honestly as possible again drawing from my own life experiences and since you know we are a small group of writers and you know we always the writers what they do is you know they always um, reach off from each other's experience you know some of us are constantly asking each other so how do you write what do you do do you get get up in the morning drink coffee then you run or do you write first uh, you know different things work for different people you know some people say oh the morning pages you know the first thing you should get up and um, you, you know you write and you know there's a certain freshness in your mind and you have certain you have had certain dreams in the night those are vivid and you should uh, uh, write my friend rekha bhardwaj for example uh, the great singer rekha bhardwaj is a very strong advocate of this she says that morning pages or the morning riyas as she calls it are the best i think i think different approaches work for different people you know i know writers who are morning people um uh, you know they get up early in the morning at 4 o'clock and they 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 write some people are night animals you know they only write in the night in the stillness of the night you know some people uh, work best from 3 am to 5 am um but i i think what is most important in all these stories is uh not to wait for any mood or inspiration to come your way uh because that happens uh very rarely in my experience uh, you know hemingway used to say that writing is very easy you know you sit in front of a typewriter and uh, wait and type till blood appears on your forehead i think i think it is true um uh, you know this famous writer rembrandt used to say in the context of painting of course but i think it holds true for writing also yashasvini that uh, he used to say that not a single day without a line um so the best writers i know and i have worked with and i am friend friends with uh they all have a they all have a certain routine 
um, they all sit religiously uh, on the table, on the laptops, in front of their notebooks. Whether something comes to them or not, uh, they just sit there and you know they have that kind of uh, uh, discipline. You'll be amazed to know Gulzar for example, you know, a very rich and versatile uh, poet writer like Gulzar Sahib, you know, who doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. Uh, you know, every morning without fail, uh, he sits in front of a table and, you know, he he has an open notebook in front of him, whether words come to him or not, he takes the time to think and to, 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 to write. Um, so I think, I think that, so I think that is very important. You, you carve out, uh, it's very difficult also because if, if you read the, read about the life of uh, some of the greatest writers in the world, V. S. Naipaul, for example, he's, he's my, I mean, he's got to me, Sir Vithi has got to me. And, um, uh, I don't think any writer has made a more st yeah, stronger uh, impression on me than uh, Vithya Naipaul. And, uh, uh, if you write, read about it, you should read his uh, wonderful uh, biography written by my friend Patrick French. And uh, when you read his biography, you know, a couple of things come across um, very richly in that story. Number one is that, uh, you know, a certain belief in yourself as a writer. Um, also, the extent to which he goes in order to write. Uh, so, you know, in some ways, writers have to be extremely selfish about their time. Uh, so sometimes, you know, your, your family suffers and, you know, a lot of other things suffer. You know, friends are expecting you and other things are expecting you. But you take out that time religiously and you sit for those four hours. Um, writers, you, you know, people who have the strong urge to write, take out time in most adverse circumstances. There have been struggling writers who have, uh, you know, coming back to your rigor of law school, you know, who, who have done two jobs, you know, one in publishing house, then waiting tables at a restaurant, then come back, uh, uh, then before sleeping, taken out two hours uh, to write every night and come out with uh, great, great works. Um, you know, I know of moms, uh, great writers, who send their kids to school at eight o'clock and then from uh, eight to 12, they sit on the dining table uh, next to mangoes and uh, papitas and you know, they, they write till their kids come back home and the house is filled with sounds and cacophony. Uh, so, so, so to cut a long story short, you know, if you have to, if you have the urge to write, you'd always take out time. Uh, and you should always take out time to write. So discipline and rigor, uh, like anything else, is 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 very important, and um, uh, passion. You know, you should always have some things. You, you 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 know, you should never let your inner child. That's what I felt. You should never let your inner child die. 